What is going on guys? In the previous video, we've built a simple HMI interface on our Compact Logix PLC. And as you can see on your screen right now, it is cycling through the three different colors on two individual lights, light one and light two. In today's video, we're going to be interfacing this back to our HMI system. And essentially, I'm going to be showing you how to link, link the HMI back to the PLC and be able to display some of these tags. And we're going to be working with different images. We're going to be working with different tags. So stay tuned and you're going to be learning quite a bit when it comes to factory talk view development. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. As you launch a factory talk view studio, you will be presented with a new slash open machine edition application. So we are going to be working with a machine edition software which means that our program is designed for those specific HMIs. Now, in this case, we're going to create a new application. So I'm going to call that Solus PLC, Solus PLC underscore street lights number one. This is going to be an English based application. So of course, do feel free to select your language of choice. And the next thing we're going to select is the uh, HMI that this is going to be the destined for. So there's going to be a couple of options, but since we're going to primarily focus on the uh, virtual development, I'm just going to go with this uh, 800 by 600 pixels performance 10 inch uh, HMI. So this is also going to be a performance based HMI. There's not a few differences, but you can explore the data sheet to find out more. We're going to hit create and within a couple of minutes, our application should be created and we will see a list of different items within this Explorer window on the left hand side. And just to give you a little reminder, if we go back, these are going to be the tags that we're going to be interfacing with. So essentially, we're going to create a screen which is going to display the different lights. So there's going to be two different lights, one light one, a green, yellow and red and light two green, yellow and red. And of course, we're going to be reading from these HMI tags, not from the tags which are used within the logic. And hopefully our HMI application is going to be up in just a second. As you can see, it is loading and everything seems to be appearing in place. The first step that I always like to do is to connect the uh, HMI to the PLC in order to be able to test certain things as we develop. So we're going to start off with that step. On the left hand side, as I mentioned, the menu is going to appear. And if we expand this factory talk links, we will have a communication setup menu. We're going to double click this uh, communication setup. And this should launch a new window through which we can create a communication. So we're going to create a new configuration. I'm going to hit finish. And essentially, RS Links Enterprise is very similar to RS Links that you have running for your PLC application. But this resides on your HMI. So you need to specifically tell your HMI how to point back to the PLC. Now, one important thing to notice is that we have this shortcuts device shortcuts menu. And here we're going to click add, which is going to be our PLC. So PLC Solus PLC underscore main is going to be the name of our PLC, the compact logics on which we're working on. And on the right hand side, or more of the middle of the screen, you will notice something that is very similar to RS links. And here we do need to select where our PLC is. And if we go back into Studio 5000, you will notice first of all, that's the name of the PLC or the model of the PLC. So it's 1769-L24ER QB1B. It's also running version 30.11 and it is residing on IP address 192.168.1.11. That is very, very important when you develop applications. You need to be aware of where your PLC is. Now, in my case, this is a driver which recognizes all of the devices on the network. If you're developing on a standalone environment which doesn't have access to the network yet, you will need to right click, add new device. And here you will have to specify, first of all, the type of the PLC. So if I expand this little folder over here, Ethernet IP devices, I can find all the different PLC types that you might encounter. So in my case, just to give you an example, this would be a 1769 L24 ER QB1B. And once you add it, you will need to specify the major revision. 
and that revision once again in studio has been specified in that parentheses as well so going back to the factory talk view studio you select this and you hit okay and now you can give this an IP address but since we've discovered it locally we don't need to create this so we're just going to cancel out but this is something you would need to do in case you don't have a PLC that you're developing for yet so since we do have a PLC we are going to select that specific PLC and we're going to hit on apply so here we are essentially telling the HMI application that this is going to be the link to the PLC. So we're going to hit on apply and this is going to tell us that first we didn't have a path which is old and the new path is going to be on this PLC box which is the name of my PLC. We're going to say yes and one more thing that we always need to do if you're working on the same um, if this IP is going to remain the same once you go into production then you have this tab which is called the runtime tab. And the difference is essentially the link between, so in the design, you're linking your computer, your virtual environment to the PLC and the runtime tab links the HMI, which is going to be deployed in the future to the PLC. So the paths may not always be the same. Therefore, uh, you may not want to use this copy from design to runtime, but in most of, most of the cases, 95% of the time, you do want to hit that button and we do want to continue in order to apply the same path for the HMI. Everything looks to be okay. We're going to hit okay down below. And that should be it in terms of linking our HMI. So we are going to open up the displays. This is the first menu that you're going to look at. And the main display is going to be the first display which the application launches upon entering the HMI. So just a blank canvas. We're going to delete this shutdown button since we don't really need it. So I'm going to right click and hit this delete button. That being said, we are going to start developing our application. And at first, I really like to just have a very rough layout on, of what it's going to look like. And then I can work offline and essentially make it a little bit better. But you don't have to watch me tweak all of the uh, all of the images. But it's going to be really simple. So it's going to be a crossroads since we are working with two different street lights. It's just going to be a crossroads and then it's going to be displaying the two lights. So one of them is going to be this way. So I'm just going to kind of mark it up. So this is going to be street light number one. And then there's going to be uh, when the cars are cir circulating this way, there's going to be a street light number two. There's no need to have duplicates since we're looking at an overall high level perspective i just want to kind of realign these a little bit and that's pretty much the very very simplistic rough sketch and i always start with this rough sketch so that i have a better idea of what i want this to look like of course we can spend a lot of time and make this a little bit more 3d and more manageable but that's not uh that's not our intention at all so we are going to start with something fairly rough and then we're going to work with it in the next videos and I'm going to work on it offline as well. So let's uh, first of all, let's get these guys a dimension. So we want something that's manageable, something that's easily seen by an operator, somebody who's looking at the system. So I'm going to get this. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. We're also going to have our lights in there as well. And those are going to be images. So I'm going to select object drawing and then image and let's see here so this image is going to be we're going to get to this in a second actually let's um let's launch the library here and the library is essentially a way for us to utilize images which have been provided by alan bradley and here we're going to start off with the red light just like you would expect at the very top and let's do like this button looks pretty well pretty good so we're going to use that and then we're going to do paste from library and this is going to be red on and we're going to hit on OK and we're going to hit yes. As you can see, it's quite a bit bigger than what we would expect. So I'm going to double click this object, go into the common tab and here I can change the height and the width. I do want to keep them the same. So I'm going to put this 64 value in for both of them. And 64, I think, is a little bit too large. So let's try something around the range of 48. Let's see, 48 works a little bit better. There's no exact science to it. It really depends on what you would want to see. But I do recommend to have some kind of a, a decent sized image. Otherwise, it becomes really difficult to see. And think of this HMI as 
uh, real world size. So this is 800 by 600 pixels and this is about how it's going to look. So you don't want it to be much smaller than this. So 48 by 48 and we're going to actually make it double image. So I'm going to control C control V and I'm going to change this image instead of being red on. I'm going to find the red off. So let's go to launch launch library. And this is going to be let's see here. So this is red off that looks a little bit better than the other one. Paste from library. And I'm going to give it a name red off the opposite of the other one. I'm going to hit OK, hit apply. And as you can see, it changed back to the original size of the image. So we do need to give it that 48 and here they are together so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to utilize this pane which is the alignment pane in order to align the center points of both of these images and i'm going to show you the reason for that in just a second so i'm going to align to both of them and as you can see now there's image one image one is this red one and i'm going to control z in order to bring it back very very important to use these shortcuts i'm also going to select both of them so when i select it like that it selects both of them and I'm going to group those images. So now it's essentially a single group and we will be able to add a tag to it, which is going to essentially toggle it back and forth. So how do we do that exactly? So I'm going to double click the group. And once you're inside of the group, as you can see, it kind of selects them both in a square. But we're going to go into what's called an animation and animation is going to be able to transition between the different states and there's going to be a lot of different animations that you can do but with images the easiest one and the most the only one that you can actually use is going to be visibility. So I'm going to select visibility and here what I want to create is that once a certain tag is on I want to display one of the images and once that tag is off I want to display the other images. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to browse the different tags that we have in our system and in order to get the PLC tags I'm going to have to refresh this entire folder so I'm going to try and it seems to be not responding for just a second. A lot of times when you first launch this application and then it's essentially trying to load a, a lot of tags that are within the system. So I'm going to right click and refresh all folders. This should give us access to the main PLC that we've defined within the communication step. I'm going to expand this. I'm going to select the online tags. And as you can see, immediately, we can see some of the tags that we've been working with. However, I don't remember them to being global tags. So I'm going to go back and just double check. So we, we don't have, we can't use these ones, but we do have to use the HMI in bool. And these tags are controller scoped, so we can use them as is. That being said, we are going to use this red tag, which is HMI underscore int underscore bool two. Let's go back into here. And we are going to see here. So it's a global tag. So HMI underscore underscore interface underscore bool and then here we can expand this window just a little bit and find tag number two i'm going to select that and at the bottom as you can see the selected tag is going to display the path to our plc later on we're going to be essentially using this path in order to map the tags but i do want you to be familiar with uh, how to browse tags on a live plc and this is very very useful so we're going to hit okay and this tag should be pasted right in there and the reason why we're pasting that tag in there is that when that tag is on, actually, we need to double check which um, which image we're replacing. But I'm going to copy this tag and this is going to be visible when this tag is high. Essentially, this expression is when the true state, as described here, this is going to be visible. We're going to hit apply. We're going to close. And I'm going to, as you can see, I have image two selected at the bottom here. I'm going to click this once and then we are going to select image one. Uh, so essentially factory talk view studio will cycle through the objects that are later layered upon each other and allows you to select them by clicking continuously. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to go into animation just like we did before visibility and I'm going to paste that expression with the control V shortcut. But in this case, in this case, I'm going to make it invisible. So it's the opposite of the other image. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to close. And at this point, we should be able to test the screen and see this image go essentially from open to closed or from high to low. 
Of course, we're going to have to wait just a little bit to see the true effect, but we do want to verify that the tag is linked correctly to the PLC and that everything is working just as we would expect. And of course, if the link is working, we do have a open connection to the PLC, so it should be toggling in just a second. But actually, I am going to not wait for that much longer. I'm just going to minimize the screen so you can see it side by side. And as you can see, the tag here is now on. Actually, we use the incorrect tag. So it's HMI underscore int underscore bool instead of interface. So I'm going to correct that in a second. I'm going to right click this once again, go into animation. And instead of interface here, I can just change that to int apply. And I'm going to click again and go into my other image and then correct this to an int. Very common mistakes. I want you to be able to see me make certain mistakes and be able to test through them. So as you can see here, the status is red. And once it switches off, it should become the other state. And once again, it is definitely it is definitely working. So it's on and then it should come off when this is high. That being said, as you've probably realized, it should actually be the opposite, it should come on the opposite way than what I've described. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this display i'm going to double click once again and i'm going to change the animation from being visible in this case in this case it's going to be invisible close go to the other one animation visibility visible and so now it should be working the right way another thing that i want to mention is i'm going to right click this i'm going to go into my display settings and I'm going to change the tag update rate. So the tag update rate is how often the HMI requests an update from the PLC. And this is essentially to allow the animation to be a little bit more smoother and to respond faster to the PLC changes. Of course, it does increase traffic on your ethernet, but I'm going to apply this. And as you can see here, I do need to reopen the HMI display. I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to cross out, I'm going to save. And I'm going to reopen it just so we can test one last time. I'm going to play this and I'm going to put the PLC on the side. As you can see, it is now turned off. As soon as it gets to this red, through the timers that we've described, it should come on on the HMI display. And that should be in three seconds, one, two, three. And as you can see, it comes on. And then once this cycles back to the green, it should come off. And of course, I am going to be developing quite a bit of graphics in the next session, but we are going to be linking all of them. We are going to be making all those lights and everything is going to be look looking very nice on our front screen. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.